Underground tunnels of Battery 405 in Kailua once served military purposes. Then it became the site of a mushroom growing operation. Now it's home to a data storage center, while also hosting tours and rummage sales to benefit an animal sanctuary on the grounds. Confused? Well, let Gary and Gina explain how it all fits together. Hi, I'm Gary Weller. I'm president of Mani Kaika, and this is my place. This is Bunker 405 on the Windward side in Kailua. And this was a military bunker that had two eight-inch guns and its job was to protect the Navy Air Station that is now Kaneohe Marine Base. Battery 405 had two eight-inch guns and these guns came off one of the ships that sunk in Pearl Harbor. And they were brought up here and they were installed right where I'm standing. And this was a ditch when we got up here that was uh, 30 feet deep. And the base of the gun sits in that 30 feet deep hole and the gun could shoot 20 miles out to sea and when the gun was fired, the percussion was so great that there's a cement column over here that the men had to stand behind. And the first time the gun was fired, it cracked a water tower up on top of the mountain and all the farmers on this side of the island were without water until the tower was fixed. Every other month, approximately, we have a garage sale up here, completely for Hawaii Animal Sanctuary. My name is Gina Lay. I'm the president of Hawaii Animal Sanctuary. It's a no-kill shelter, and uh, we're a predominantly uh, an old folks home for cats. We're actually a sanctuary, which is different from a regular shelter who does regular in and out as they adopt them out. Our gang here is, uh, pretty much comes to spend the rest of their lives here. So we don't lock our animals up. Uh, they're fixed and they're allowed to um, live freely, uh, sleep in the sun or the shade or lounge on a chair, uh, whatever they'd like to do to have a comfortable life. I'm a horticulturist by trade and I had a plant rental company and we were originally based in Hawaii Kai and uh, Having a plant nursery there, uh, it was kind of a farm area and people just abandon animals out there all the time. And I felt sorry for them and I made the mistake of feeding a few and then pretty soon we ended up with a whole lot of animals and we, uh, we had a whole range of animals, cats, dogs, rabbits, chickens and pigs. We were there for about 30 years. Eventually, we decided to move the shelter to this location in Kailua, and we became a full nonprofit. We've been really lucky to have a generous donors in Kailua, Kaneohe, and even some of our previous supporters in Hawaii Kai will still bring us stuff to uh, sell to raise uh, money for the animals. Plus, we also take plants and rehab them and sell plants, so our plants are kind of popular at our sales. We're one of the few shelters that do accept uh, feral animals and uh, we get everybody fixed. Anybody crosses our path we fix them. We tried to shrink down the population some and so we currently have around 200 animals. A lot of people don't realize there's that many because they have the whole hillside to live on so they'll sleep under a bush here or lay there. When we have large crowds here they vaporize. The main purpose here is to allow them to live in peace. We became into business because people abandon animals and they also don't fix animals. People make the mistake of thinking, in particular, that cats can make it on their own in the wild. And unless they've been born and raised in the wild and taught to hunt, most of the cats don't know how to hunt. You take a pet, you've always opened up a cat food can, that's what they expect. So you dump them in the weeds and expect them to make it, and they don't. And so we, uh, along with many of the other shelters, push for spay neuter. Uh, we're very grateful for the Hawaiian Humane Society program to help fix this feral cats that we work with. Um, so that's been a really big bonus. What we need the public to do is always fix your animals. Normally on one of the special garage sales I also give a historical tour of the bunker and now we're going to go inside. So the ceiling here is 19 inches thick, the walls are 23 inches thick and the entire bunker sits on a four foot thick cement floor. From 1950 to 2000 that mushroom farm that was in here because of the 98 percent moisture 
and no way to dry out all the wood that was in here. I had to take all the ceilings out and it took me from 2000 to 2005 and all we did every single day was demolition and uh, Gina's brother is a big bodybuilder and surfer so he had plenty of energy and he helped me take down all the ceilings and take 33 semi trucks of garbage out of here and so then we started painting, sandblasting, re-putting in uh, the lights back to what they used to be looked like and uh, getting the bunker prepared like putting in floors, electricity and etc. A lot of people uh, ask me why did I do this? Well, I've been in IT for years and I see that Hawaii has a potential to eventually have a tsunami come or a very, very strong hurricane, maybe category four. And if that happens, what people don't realize in Hawaii is most of the island is at sea level or no more than 10 feet above sea level. So I was very concerned that we entered the digital age and that all that data would disappear because they're not going to let you take that with you when you evacuate. So we have started to build a data center up here. And I back up several businesses right now. And these are my rack servers. And uh, we're building our clientele and eventually we'll air condition the room to even have more clientele inside. But right now that's as far as we've gotten. This room originally was the projectile room. And back then, it looked like that. And so we've gone from devastating explosive devices to saving people's data. This is what the Navy Air Station looked like before the beginning of World War II. This bunker was built after the bombing of Pearl Harbor and it was part of Seacoast Defense and Seacoast Defense fell underneath the War Department and its job was to protect all the borders of the United States and the coastal areas and so uh, this is what the base looked like uh, after World War II okay and this is what the base looks like today so from here to here it was a Navy air station ran by the Navy and then it was converted to a Mar Navy uh, Marine Corps Air Station, and now it's a Marine Corps base. So here we are in this bunker, and uh, this is where we do our fundraising for the animal shelter, and uh, we're really lucky to have this from Mani Kaika to use. Um, about every six to eight weeks, our upcoming uh, fundraiser will be October 19th, that's Saturday at, uh, from eight to two. And then the, after that, we'll have two more in December. And uh, the first one will be real fun. It's the first Saturday in December. And it's a sip and shop at night. So it's a, we get poo poos and drinks. And it's all beautiful with Christmas and everything else. But for now, we do have a Halloween and Thanksgiving theme. We have about a 100-foot haul that allows us to display a huge amount of stuff. And we get a huge amount of stuff from our donors in uh, Kailua, Kaneohe, Waikai, and it's some really nice stuff. Uh, all kinds of household goods, knickknacks, um, holiday decorations, clothing galore, and you can't beat our prices because it's a dollar an item for most of our clothing. Hands down, you can't beat it anywhere. Some of our items are really, really nice. We like have hand-painted china, and then we also have uh, in just inexpensive household goods that you can uh, get. And so our tours include um, 8 to 2, any time to come and shop, and then we also have three tours for the tunnel itself during that time, and uh, we always notify on all the different medias uh, when we are going to be doing a, a fundraiser. I just wanted to thank everyone that supports my animal shelter, in particular my uh, hardworking volunteers. We can always use more volunteers, so you can contact us through our uh, website, and also, if you come up to our garage cell, we give out information there, too. And you can sign up to be volunteers. We also very grateful for any cash donations, because um, uh, they go straight to the animals. Um, and so it's always a real big benefit to it. So 
All of these uh, Remy cells, you just look for us. We, like I said, we post on all the different medias. All the money goes directly to the animals. Vet care is ex very expensive, especially when you have elder animals. And so uh, anyone that would like to support us, we'd be more than grateful to have your help. Oh, stick around. We have much more coming up.